He called it Al-Malhamatul Kubra. The Prophet ﷺ called it Al-Malhamatul Kubra. And a lot of the scholars say Al-Mahdi will be leading this war, the gigantic combat. His army will fight the Romans. The Romans in those days, or the Byzantines in those days, today are most likely the majority of the Europeans. They're the descendants of the Romans and the Byzantines. So whoever they are today, and they are mostly the European descendants of the uh, Romans, Byzantines, the Muslims fight the Romans by Dabiq. Dabiq is a place close to the, sh in the Sham, a little bit outside of Medina, in Dabiq. So you, you can see, Rasulullah is telling us in that area, outside of Medina, not directly in Saudi, but or in Medina because it's in Saudi, but outside of it, somewhere in, a, in Dabiq, in the mid part of Asham, of the Middle East that we know of today. He said, you will fight the Romans in Dabiq. You will find that the flying object on the sides, outside, on the outskirts of the war, will drop from the sky from the intensity of this battle. That will fall from the sky from the intensity of this battle. Allahu A'lam. Allahu A'lam what this is interpreted as. But what we can guess, just a guess, is nuclear weapons. But Allah knows best. Because what will make the flying objects or flying birds drop from the sky unless you just shoot them down? But the hadith is not saying it will be a fight with the birds. Nor will people be shooting birds down. They will drop from the intensity of the war. Wallahu a'lam what else that could mean. This batch of army will 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 will, will uh, will disappear. Dafna, fana, fana means disappearance. Some scholars say they will have no essence. You, you can't find them. Their bodies will perish, that they'll be they'll disappear. You can't find them, they're gone. Muslims send up another batch. Same thing happens to them. The night departs between them and Fatafna Shurta, the whole batch fades, it disappears. Third army. He says, finally, the rest of the Muslims of the world gather against them. Some of our scholars say, this indicates to us that only a, a small amount of people will be following Islam with loyalty and truth and zeal and, and everything. A small amount. Because it tells you the rest of the Muslims of the world will gather against them. The women, children, men, everyone, all the Muslims will gather against them. All out jihad. He says they will fight so fiercely and it will be such a bloody war that it will end and the Muslims will be victorious but he gives an example if a family had a hundred members in it for example there will only be one of them alive the rest are all dead he says what ghanima is like when you when you when, when you're in war you take the belongings of the of the people you've conquered so it's called a ghanim, the duty of the war. He goes, on that day, Muslims will not rejoice over any booty. Because what mirath is there going to be? He said, what inheritance can be given out? The families are all dead. The majority of people are dead. That's how fierce it is. He was saying, like, if a family had a hundred, one of them will remain living. So... Why will he be happy? And what kind of inheritance is he going to look forward to giving? Or So the whole world has gone out of our hearts. That's what it means. There's no more clinging to the dunya at all. The only thing you look for is to the hereafter. You want to meet your family in the hereafter. That's all it really is. And it's unfortunate that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has to take out forcefully this world from our hearts. The love of this world, yani, the materialism, as it has crept into our hearts today, a lot of the people. Materialism in the sense that it is the priority. And deen is secondary, third, fourth, maybe last. That's what's happened. So Allah has to force it out in this tragedy in order for us to return back to our unity and to our strength. This is the only way we get our strength. Through sincerity for Allah. And this batch of Muslims, this whatever's left, are the sincere ones. They're the sifted ones. In that war between the Romans and the Muslims, Rasul Sallallahu tells us, this is another sign of the Mahdi's presence, an army from the Romans will take a different pathway from the main army that's fighting. And they will go around from the Sham, in the Sham, from the Syrian side. 
and a group of Muslims from Medina, Arabs, will go to meet them, to combat them, not to let them through. What they're trying to do is to come from behind and trap the Muslims. And this Muslim army comes from out from Medina. The Prophet ﷺ said they are the best believers on that day, the most pious people on that day. They will fight. And the, those batch of Romans will say to them, we are not here to fight you. I mean, we're not coming here to fight you people who are born in a Muslim lifestyle. We have come to fight alladheena sabu minna. We've come to fight those who left our ranks. Those who left our ranks. What does this mean? Our scholars tell us this means that those who converted to Islam and left the Europeans and those people from non from Christianity or whatever religion it may be and gone into Islam and joined the Muslim army. These people are going to come. He said, we are coming to get them who left us and betrayed us and left us, they say. And the Muslim Arabs who come out from Medina will say to them, Wallahi, we will not let through between you, but we will not let you through to fight our brothers and sisters. Because in Islam, once you embrace Islam, you become brothers and sisters. So we will not let you through to hurt our brothers and sisters. We will rather die in protection of them. So they fight. A third of that army runs away. Rasul Sallallahu says, Allah will never forgive them. A third will die. He said they are the best shuhada on that day, martyrs, and a third will gain victory. So that's another sign of the presence of the Mahdi.